It's Friday, October 25th, 2013. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number five of TEN, Transport Your Old News, for the week beginning October 21st, 2013. Picture this, you're cruising down the autobahn through scenic countryside without a care in the world, no speed limit to hold you back, and you are just enjoying the ride of the Model S. But is the ride as good as it can be? Well, according to Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla Motors, it isn't quite there yet. You see, the Model S was never really tuned for constant long distance high speed driving, and we're talking speeds in excess of 200 kilometers per hour. That's 125 miles per hour. So, while driving down an unrestricted section of the autobahn on a recent trip to Germany, Musk noticed that his Model S didn't quite handle the high-speed lane changing as smoothly as he'd like. Being Elon Musk, he tasked a team of engineers to visit Germany from Tesla HQ in California in order to tune the Model S to handle as well at full speed as it does at more normal road speeds. But wait, there's more! This isn't just a tune-up for Musk's personal German Model S, if he has one, which we think he probably does. No, this is a tuning session which will result in all Model S owners in Europe being given the option to have a free autobahn tune-up for their cars. Now, while the tune-up won't make the Model S go any faster, there is a finite limit to how fast that single-speed gearbox and electric motor can spin. Musk says it will make the Model S handle really sweetly at its current top speed of 135 miles an hour. Current top speed? Yeah, okay, we know we just said the car is limited right now to 135 miles per hour, but we're talking about Elon Musk here. Last night at the London Tesla store opening, he hinted that the top speed could be improved in the near future, but that further engineering tests were needed before safely doing so. In related news, the EU supercharger network is set to be even more super than its US counterpart, as EU Model S's have an 11 kilowatt three-phase onboard charger rather than the 10 kilowatt single-phase charger on the US models. The superchargers in Europe are able to provide up to 135 kilowatts of power. That's 12.5% faster than most US superchargers. And all of this is being provided through an adapted version of the Type 2, sometimes known as Menenkes, connector. There was a time when we thought the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid was cursed. Plagued by setback after setback, the car has been delayed and pushed back more times than we've had hot dinners. But this week it finally started sales in Europe, with early deliveries going to Northern European and Scandinavian countries. While we haven't driven the Outlander plug-in hybrid yet, we can tell you it's a lovely piece of technology on paper, packing a 2-litre turbocharged engine with two 50 kilowatt electric motors for true all-wheel drive off-road capabilities. It can also tow up to 1.5 metric tonnes. That's around £3,306 in the US, making it one of the most versatile plug-in hybrids on the market. But that grunt comes at a cost. It's not the most aerodynamic car on sale, meaning it's only expected to travel 30 or so miles on its 12 kilowatt hours of lithium ion battery. Mitsubishi claim that it is expected to return about 148 miles per imperial gallon, 1.9 litres per 100 kilometres, in combined mode and 48.7 miles per imperial gallon when just using dino juice. But those figures do come from the overly optimistic European test cycles and we know that they don't reflect real world driving. Have you been waiting for BMW to launch the i3 in your country? We know lots of our viewers have, so if you're one of them and you happen to live in the UK, you'll want to pay special attention to this next piece of news. Earlier this week, BMW released its price list for the i3 all-electric and i3 Rex range extended EVs. A base model all-electric i3 will cost you £30,625, while a range extending i3 Rex will start at £33,775. Both of those prices are on the road before incentives. But the really interesting bit comes next. Like Tesla, BMW has chosen to quote prices for an entry-level, no-frills base model. Then customers just add the features they want for their car. Since each item is separately itemised, the price you'll end up paying literally depends on what features you want and how much you're willing to spend. It's essentially like being the subway version of electric cars, except where cheese is a sunroof, tomato is DC rapid charging, and those yummy yummy olives are the leather seats and wooden panelling. We had a play and specced out the top range car with all the bits and bobs and olives and everything else and got somewhere near to £47,000. Okay, so anyone doing that will be able to knock off five grand off the price due to UK government grants, but 42000 is certainly nearer the price you'd expect to pay for an average BMW. How often do you get to drive a €100,000 car of which there will only ever be 250 made? No, we don't get the chance that much either, but this week we did. 
The Volkswagen XL1 is V-Dub's fuel-sipping diesel plug-in hybrid, capable of an astonishingly high 313 miles per UK gallon. It's ultra-sleek, lightweight, and even has rear-view cameras instead of rear-view mirrors to achieve a drag coefficient of just 0 0.189. Driving it around a 30 mile course, we got to try it in all electric mode, real world range is reported to be about 30 miles, and diesel mode. Futuristic, great to drive and good fun, the XL1 isn't going to be on your shopping list anytime soon however. Aside from the price and limited production, the charging system isn't on board the car, meaning you can't charge it up anywhere but your garage. That's a bit of a design flaw that. We've had a really busy week and fun week here at Transport Evolved. Not only did we get to drive the Volkswagen XL1 earlier this week, but we were lucky enough to be on the guest list for Tesla's grand opening of its first UK retail store, located at Westfield Shopping Mall in White City. Ironically, just down the road from where BBC Top Gear used to have its gasoline-worshipping, EV-hating offices at former BBC TV centre. As the Tesla saw itself isn't all that big, although it does have a cool Tesla Model S chassis on display next to a fully finished Model S, the main event was held in Westfield Mall's giant atrium, where we were treated to some really sick beats, some canapes, good drink, and of course, an appearance from Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who answered questions from the audience. Sadly, the sound system wasn't all that great when the crowd swelled, so we missed some of what Musk had to say. But we live blogged the event as best we could at transportevolve.com if you're interested. To tease you though, here are a few of the choice things we did pick up. The base model S, which comes with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and about 200 miles of range, is expected to go on sale in the UK next year for £55,000. When the Model X crossover SUV follows a year or so later, it will cost a little more thanks to its dual electric motors and all wheel drive capability. But, says Musk, it won't be too much more expensive. Like Germany, the UK will get blanket supercharger coverage in the coming year, which, Musk says, will mean everyone is within easy reach of a supercharger station. We're not quite sure how easy easy is, but we are very excited. Musk even sneaked in a snippet about Tesla's affordable car, probably the Model E, expected sometime in the next three years. He said it would cost around £30,000, the equivalent of a 25,000 petrol car, with the affordable Tesla offering great range and all of the things you'd expect from Tesla in terms of service and quality. But what some of the folks didn't pick up, and we did, was the news that Tesla is planning to offer another, even cheaper car in six years' time. So if you can't afford a Model S or Model X right now, don't despair. An affordable Tesla might be on its way to the market pretty soon. The Chevrolet Spark EV, GM's first all-electric car since the much-missed EV1, recently went on sale in the US. Despite its cute name and massive worldwide popularity in its gasoline form, Chevrolet might be backing down on original plans to offer it for sale in Canada and Europe. Originally, GM had hinted that it was planning to offer the Spark EV for sale across the US, Canada and Europe, but earlier this week, GM officials talking to Green Car Reports said that there were no current plans to expand sales nationwide in the US, and the Chevy Spark EV would only be available to select fleet buyers in Canada. Worse still, and blaming a lack of interest from buyers, GM said its European launch plans for the Spark EV were on hold, saying that the EU market was still in its infancy. Here at Transport Evolved, we're gutted. The dyno-burning version of the Spark has been around here in the UK for some time, and it's a popular car we see in and around the roads around Bristol. With its small frame and funky looks, we think an electric version would have appealed to buyers. But now we're worried we'll never see it. Remind me, who killed the electric car again? That's it for the week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live on Sunday when we'll be discussing these and other stories on Transport Evolved. I'm Mickey Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up. Being Elon Musk, he tasked a team of engineers to destroy the design concept. There's a werewolf, a ghost, a vampire, and Elon Musk, all sharing a flat in Bristol. Shut up! <laughs> okay, <laughs> dead puppies.